It's difficult for us to imagine today, but there was a time when traveling from New York to California took six months. It's half of a year. I was six months largely by wagon, wooden wheels, over thousands of miles of raw terrain, and through unbearable conditions, harsh weather, the risk of disease. People routinely died on this trek out west. And then came the railroad. And it changed everything. Iron tracks that cut a clear path, a distinct and reliable path through the heart of our country. It was now only one week trip from New York to California, east coast to west coast. Six months down to just one week. Now fast forward to today, and I could be on a flight to New York after this talk in time for a late dinner date. It was unimaginable back then. And so in this way, transportation, it's not really about airplanes, cars, trains, or even the wagon. All forms of transportation that we've ever known are just our repeated attempts, humanity's repeated attempts at resolving a basic problem. How do we move things and people from point A to B in the best way? And these attempts are so important because as much as we hate traffic, transportation improves our core existence. It fundamentally shifts our entire civilization, changes how we interact and exist as humans. And now we're on the edge of yet another seismic change. It's called Hyperloop. And the plan is to connect cities in the Northwest soon. Five, four, three, two, one, fire. Hyperloop, Hyperloop will move at nearly the speed of a bullet. A trip from Seattle to Portland would take just 20 minutes. 20 minutes, that's, that's a trip from Seattle to the east side. <laughs> in, in light traffic, in light traffic on a good day, of course, of course. <laughs> Entrepreneur and inventor Elon Musk, he first called it a cross between a Concorde a railgun, and an air hockey table. <laughs> so what the hell does that mean? Does anyone... <laughs> so essentially, Hyperloop uses magnetic levitation inside of a low-pressure tube to move pod vehicles at airline speeds right here on the ground. If you remember the Jetsons, think George Jetson whizzing through a tube on his way to work. So essentially, if you limit the amount of friction and air resistance on these pods, it's projected to move at nearly 700 miles per hour. In August of this year, in one of the first Hyperloop tests ever, it moved at nearly 200 miles an hour, so about a third of its potential speed. So it's fast. Well, so what? Who cares about the speed? And besides the cool factor, and it is cool, I probably like fast things more than the average person, it's about what the speed represents. Think back to the railroad. Think about the explosion in new interaction it caused. Entire new cities and towns sprang up. It physically transformed our landscape. Business could be done from coast to coast. Technologies, new art forms, new, new ideas 3,000 miles apart could suddenly be exchanged so much easier. So yes, Hyperloop would affect our transportation systems. Fewer cars, less traffic, less CO2 emissions. But it would also change the way ideas are spread. It would expose new paths 
to innovation. It would completely transform how we interact. Growing up in Ellensburg, it's a small town, a population around 20,000, where traffic jams might be caused by something like this. <laughs> it was a great place to grow up, but there weren't a whole lot of new opportunities to transform things. If you were to imagine a map, a visual of you know, these new interactions or opportunities around me growing up, it might look something like this. There's not a whole lot going on. When the chance to attend the University of Washington here in Seattle came, of course I jumped at it. It was all I could think about. But more than just being here, I saw a vast network. I saw a network of people and players I could interact with, share ideas with, and learn from. I saw a network that looked much more like this in my head. And so all this interaction I'm talking about, you know, architects now intentionally design buildings to enable just this kind of it, the cross-pollination of ideas. You've probably seen co-work spaces popping up. If you haven't, the idea is essentially you know, people from various backgrounds, business people, students, programmers, artists, etc., all working alongside each other in a shared workspace. The idea is that in this environment, new ideas and perspectives that wouldn't really meet nor normally. Well, they collide much more often. And what you get is a really unique spillover of knowledge. And so today, why is all of this interaction so important? Well, it comes down to a word. Innovation. If Seattle and Portland were just 20 minutes apart, what could we accomplish together? Imagine. Natasha lives in Seattle, and she works at Amazon. She needs a new visual designer, and so she hires Brennan. Now, Brennan is a Portland resident, lifelong. All of his friends and family live there, and he works currently as a designer at Nike. But he accepts the job. He starts commuting every day from Portland to Seattle on Hyperloop, and it's super convenient. All right, he keeps his life in Portland, he expands his career, Natasha gains unique perspective that's very specific to Nike. Everyone wins. But for a second, really consider their situation. They're, they're together four to five days out of the week, about eight hours a day. And it's just like how two of us, both living and working in Seattle, you know, might exist at work together. Except there's one very important difference you can probably spot. Brennan is from Portland. His entire perspective, everything he knows, problems, passions, culture, solutions, it's all based, it's rooted in Portland. So you not only preserve this one perspective, but multiply the effect across tens of thousands of people, all commuting from one city to another every day, and you get a level and type of human interaction like the world has never seen before. The question then is what brand new ideas, what unprecedented spillover of knowledge might come out of this unique intercity relationship? And for the answer, we can look to history. This is Frank Whittle. Frank was a pilot in the Royal Air Force in the 1920s and 30s and he also invented the jet engine, that critical technology making possible my last minute flight to New York. <laughs> well, while Frank was developing these ideas that would become the jet engine, he was constantly traveling. He was constantly flying this, a revolutionary prop-powered biplane at the time, from city to city. Frank would fly from London to Cambridge, to Edinburgh, to Rugby, to cities all over the UK, exchanging ideas, socializing his perspectives, consulting with experts across fields, and ultimately taking steps to make his idea a reality. And 100 years later, we experience the outcome every time we step on to a Boeing 737. So transportation has always been an enabler of great things. The possibility for these innovative offshoots comes, comes with it. But going forward, transportation will necessarily be 
about enabling these new transformative ideas. Hyperloop is a purposeful attempt, an intentional attempt at doing exactly this across cities. Because connecting diverse people is such a crucial part of how great innovations are born. This year, Washington State is reviewing Hyperloop and ultra-high-speed rail from Vancouver, BC to Seattle to Portland. And our company is exploring new ways for private industry and the public to get involved. Just this year, we partnered with the foremost Hyperloop technology company as a semi-finalist in their global competition, making the case, pushing for a future Seattle to Portland route. And I'd like to share with you our shared vision for the future of Hyperloop. The Hyperpod is the long-haul vehicle of the Hyperloop One system. It is a comfortable and safe transport hold for passenger and cargo pods. All levitation and guidance systems fit seamlessly underneath. Secure airlocks are at each end. Inside the Hyperpod, Passenger and cargo pods can glide smoothly at airline speeds right to their destination. So, <laughs> so I, I first got involved with Hyperloop simply because it was an exciting new idea. All right, it's fast, it's futuristic, and what's not to like? But today, I'm driven to bring Hyperloop here because of its potential to connect people and their ideas. Its potential to connect people with jobs they love, other people who inspire them, to allow the real freedom and choice for a person to choose where they live. Moving to Seattle is not the most important decision I've made because of any class I've taken or because I get to stand up today and talk in front of all you lovely people. <laughs> it's the most important and rewarding decision I've made because of the people I've connected with from every corner of the world. Hyperloop, its real value lies in its ability to improve our core existence, and its ability to connect people, and that's exactly what it could mean for us, a more connected Pacific Northwest, ready to collaborate and share ideas, innovate together for decades to come. Thank you all so much.